Perfect. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. I know it's been a little bit of a hectic morning. Um, Jenny, we're going to start off with you just giving us some opening statements on the upcoming weekend. Yeah, awesome. Um, we are headed to Midway, Utah. The venue is Soldier Hollow Nordic Ski Center, kind of an hour past um, Park City, Utah. And we're bringing five girls, five guys. They're very excited to get down there. We're super excited to have some races planned. And um, it has been a, a wild ride of figuring out protocol and figuring out what we can do and how to do it safely. But we're, we're definitely excited to, to head down and get on the start line and get some Utah sun. <laughs> All right, we're going to open up for questions. Bruce, if you've got a question, uh, go ahead. Um, it looks like three of the first four competitions, Factor Wings on the Road this year, are going to be in the Salt Lake City, Utah area. Will that be an advantage uh, to see your uh, team uh, get better each week in each competition and see the uh, standings and scores improve? Yeah, absolutely. I think it'll be a really um, great venue for us. It's not, it's at altitude, but it's not that high. Some of um, our other, there's two other competitions that we are um, not doing that are in Aspen, um, a lot higher altitude there. And so Soldier Hollow, um, being able to have that repetition and, and get to know the course better and better for this week. And then um, we come back and have about a month and then race again down there end of February. And then we have regionals as well in, in Soldier Hollow. And yeah, it'll be, it'll be great to keep progressing on those courses. Awesome. A Aaron, we'll swing over to you. All right. Question I have for you coach is um, what, does, what does it mean to you to have the head coach, you know, at least putting all that confidence in you and, and, and entrusting you with the team uh, heading into the season? Yeah, I am very excited to be um, in this position. It's definitely a lot of work and um, I'm super excited that these guys get to get to travel and, and, and um, I want to, I want to do the team proud by um, doing, doing my part and making sure everything runs smoothly as smooth as you can have anything run in 2020. Um, and I know she's, um, waiting to have her have her baby and excited to see how the team does. Jordan. Sure, we can head over to Logan. Uh, Logan, what can you say about Coach Bender and uh, this transition and how, how she's doing taking over the program so far? Uh, she's been killing it. Um, it's kind of, I think it's never like an easy situation, getting a lot more responsibility like that and getting kind of like tossed into that situation. But it's been super smooth and I know the whole team has been vibing and really meshing well with uh, her instruction. And yeah, I think everyone's really excited with how things have been going. Bruce, if you want to, if you got a second question. Yeah. For Logan again, uh, your second year skiing for the, the Nanak program, uh, you looking to improve uh, what have you done to improve yourself uh, to make yourself a better skier? Uh, well, it's been kind of interesting because, um, I think the typical path for improvement is kind of different now with COVID. You're not really like going to the gym as much as you would have or doing intervals with as many um, people. So um, the training's definitely been unique, but just um, every day I've tried to do like a little bit more core and I've started um, including a lot more stretching to increase mobility. But for the most part, it's just kind of been a lot more just pushing yourself in intervals, kind of using your experience and doing the best you can. I got a pretty killer playlist right now too for when I'm by myself. Um, so yeah, I know it's just a lot of um, self betterment, I guess is the best way to put it. Aaron. Yeah. Uh, quick question for, uh, for Logan. What's the go-to song for your playlist as uh, you hit the trails? Uh, I've been, I've been watching a lot of Peaky Blinders. So there's this one, uh, it's not the theme, but it's one they play when they uh, are always like walking down the road and um, Birmingham, it's uh, Out of the Black by uh, Royal Blood. And that one's a pretty good one. A lot of guitar. Thanks. Hey, Logan, what about the hard work one? Oh, yeah. There's, <laughs> yeah, there's one uh, 
hard work it's like an air force song that i saw on a tiktok once that it's a pretty good one too <laughs> jordan <laughs> sure uh we'll go to kendall uh kendall you lined up for a lot of big time races in your career but this will be your first collegiate race what sort of the mindset what sort of feelings will be going through your body and your mind uh, for that first collegiate race um gosh well i'm super fortunate to be racing against some girls that um i've really been head to head with my whole life like um, Novi McCabe and Sydney Palmer Ledger, who go to Utah right now, um, all three of us have kind of been very close for three, four years now, ever since I started ski racing. And so it's going to be really, really cool to see how I stack up against them um, when I go to Utah, um, now that we're all in college. And I've always known that the like the college racing path was for me. I never really wanted to go like straight pro or take a gap year or anything um, because I really like the combination of the school spirit. That's kind of the extra push. And um, I just really want to make like UAF proud. And so I think that's going to be a lot of extra motivation. It's going to make it easier for me when kind of like I have something outside myself to work for. Bruce, do you have another question? Yeah, for Kendall, obviously uh, skiing at to UAF, but I had I have a feeling you must have had some other choices as far as where you could have went to, to college or university. Was UAF a no-brainer for you? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's um, options between places at high elevation or there was Ivy Leagues and I just, I really, yeah, I, I've told a bunch of people this, but I really had to evaluate my priorities and not think about like what looks good on paper, but what makes me feel the best. And that's definitely UAF. I've felt comfortable and happy the entire time I've been here. And that's most important for me because that's how I'm gonna focus on my sports and my school and how everything's gonna go smoothly. And so like, no doubt UAF was the, was the college for me, yeah. <laughs> Aaron? A uh, question for Kendall. Um... One of my last conversations I had with uh, with uh, Alishka was she was very impressed with your uh, your maturity and, and your growth as a as an athlete. What's it mean to have the the coaching staff that are so invested in you and they're and excited to see your career uh, play out, especially with this first uh, upcoming races? Yeah, I definitely feel um, like my coaches all care about me as a person, and we can have just like regular conversations, and I feel very understood. I think maybe that's in part by all of my coaches are women this year um, with Jenny and Alishka and Kate with the US ski team. Um, I did have a male coach because I trained with Alaska Winter Stars in Anchorage this summer, but I think they're all just so understanding and that's so important to me. And I'm really glad that they have taken the time to realize the type of person I am and realize um, like what they need to say to me and the conversations that they need to have with me in order for me to be like stress-free and have a good time. And it, yeah, it means a lot that my coaches are taking time to understand me as a person. And um, they can tell me stories and relate to me. And I found that's happening often. <laughs> Jordan? Great. Hey, uh, we'll go back to the coach here. Uh, coach Skeen has taken you a lot of different places across the map uh, now here in Alaska. What what does that mean to you to be be here in Alaska? What's this experience been like so far Take as Skeen's brought you here to from the 49th state? Yeah, I am originally from the East Coast. Um, I was on a team in the Midwest. I was on a team in Montana, and I've always wanted to live in Alaska. So I love the mountains around here, and the people are – solid humans um it's a good it's a good crew so um, i'm really excited to, to spend some time up here all right we're, we'll go through the list uh, one or two more times bruce if you want to have one more question yeah my, my final question i know it's nordic skiing cross-country skiing maybe it's a lack of facilities but uh has there ever been talk about doing that downhill skiing for for the alaskan ennis I think that has been in conversation, partly, um, there's a, I think there's a lot of different components to that. Um, facilities for one, um, kind of mixed with budget as well 
as um, I know with working with um, UAA and, and it's super exciting to see that their um, Alpine team is, is, has been raising a lot of money to get um, protect their program. And yeah, for us, it's, it's been, we've had a lot of focus on the Nordic and maybe one day it'd be nice. It would help us at NCAAs for sure. Aaron. Uh, this, this question's for, uh, for both Logan and, and uh, Kendall, you know, there's a lot of Alaska talent that, that come and go in, in the state, but what's it mean for you guys to represent the state and the university in these competitions? Um, I'll go first. So I think that it means to represent Alaska because I think the athletes just have a lot more grit because they have to um, work with a lot of non-ideal conditions um, a lot of the time, mostly because we're not skiing at like resorts like Sun Valley or some East Coast kids are. Um, and we don't have like ski schools and it's just, it's a lot of independent work and it's a lot of well-rounded kids and I really enjoy representing like the toughness. Um, yeah, no, definitely. Um, I think the biggest thing is just like, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of expectations when you're from Alaska. You don't think like premier football program when you hear the word Alaska. So um, just kind of show them that like, yeah, we are the ski state, we kick butt, we're gonna kick your butt. Um, and yeah, no, um, when you ski in Alaska, you're not going to be not competitive, I guess is the way to put it. So just trying to showing that off that like, yeah, we're, we kind of, we're here to do take names and do what we do. So, and Alaska's awesome. So you, of course you want to perform for your home state, put the city on the map. The way of life. There's a lot of support in the community and um, it's a great way to get some air when it's cold outside and when you want to go see the sun for a few hours. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's definitely part of life up here. Yeah, the whole community is definitely really invested. If you're skiing, like the groomers will chat you up like, oh, how's your training going and stuff. And I don't think you get that many other places. So you definitely feel the whole community of Fairbanks and even the state kind of pulling for you, which is really nice. Jordan? Sure, I got one more for each of the student athletes, if that's cool. Yep. Oh, yeah. Starting with, uh, we can stick with Logan. Uh, you have the year of collegiate experience under your belt. So I just want, I'm curious out of thinking back to last year's prep training experience compared to this year, obviously being a lot different with lack of gyms or training or things like that. So kind of walk me through sort of the differences between last year and this year, prep training, all that that comes with it. Yeah, um, there's a lot more self-motivation, I guess. Um, you're meeting with your team and kind of your competitors a lot less. So when you're having like less races going into the season, you're not getting like that reminder, that like competitive edge. So you kind of have to be doing that a lot on your own. And that can just be like visualization and just um, maybe watching like Rocky Four a few more times, really getting that uh, motivation going. But for the most part, it's just a lot, a lot of on your own training. So uh, I take my like chocolate lab out on a lot more runs now and kind of um you just got to be able to push yourself and that's kind of what the whole sport's built on so it's just kind of playing more into that side of it great well put and correct me if i'm wrong you guys but uh you guys will not lose a year of eligibility this year is that correct no yeah we get another year so luke luke might get a six year right. <laughs> look at that awesome and so for you kendall you know this is a free year of collegiate experience for you yeah. What do you hope to take away and uh, take away and leave with uh, this this free year? What do you hope to gain from it? Um, I think just by getting an extra year, um, we get all the I think we get all the good parts about a uh, ski racing season, like the trips and whatnot. But I think I can take this year as getting to know the team better and um, just kind of an extra year of more like time with them, like not just on trips, not stressed out, just training at home and enjoying our trails. And I think that it's actually very fortunate that this year's a little bit more calm because I can adjust to, even though I'm still in Fairbanks and I have access to my house 20 minutes away still, I think it's still a very like different lifestyle and I'm having to be independent. So it's a nice transition into that. And that made it a lot more calm and a lot more um, doable. 
Awesome. Thank you. Bruce, you got any more questions? I'm good. Just a good luck this weekend and good luck on the season. Perfect. We'll head over to Aaron if you've got one last question. I'm all good. Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, I appreciate you guys joining. Um, good luck this weekend. And this recording will be up on YouTube in about an hour. So have a good day. Thank you you guys. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Good luck. Thanks guys. Bye.